for today. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. I will extol you, my God and my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all of your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all of his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Well, I hope the popcorn is tasting good to you guys. Yes, and also I truly hope that the video that we just watched will inspire you to see how much God loves you and He tells you through nature. And, um, you know, I want to just take a moment before uh, we pray, and I want to ask you this question. You know, what is something challenging that you have done in this season? What has been something challenging that you have done in this season? Think about it and let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather together, Lord Jesus. Not only, uh, Father, it might be in person, but also just as a community, Father, as we are just listening and we want to be close to you, Lord. I pray that today we will uh, not only be uh, challenged by you, that we will be loved by you, encouraged, Lord, uh, maybe corrected by you, Father. But I just pray right now that everybody that is listening this morning, Lord Jesus, will not uh, leave without just uh, receiving your, uh, your love, Father, and knowing that you are with us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So what is something challenge that you have done in this season? Let me tell you about me. You know, maybe for you, actually, you might be saying, well, you know, in this season, something challenging has been just to simply actually keeping a normal life. You know what I mean? Whatever it looks like to you. Or maybe saying, I, you know, keeping my house in order, making sure my kids do not kill each other. You know, I don't know what it might be to you. But, you know, about a month ago, I had, for me, I did something that really challenged me like never before. And uh, I was invited with a, uh, by a couple of friends to go on a two-day hiking trip, backpacking trip, and we hike over 20 miles, and yes, I almost died, guys. I'm telling you, I almost died. And for sure, it was something that stretched me, and it really, I learned a lot, not only about, you know, myself and going on a hike, but I felt like as I was traveling that I was like, you know, I think that God can use this for something actually beyond just the physical, but actually our spiritual life, you know? And we just finished our unfair series when we talked about the life of Joseph, you know? And we actually, next week, we're going to be starting this new series about the Apostle Paul. And I felt that it was important for us today just to do something a little bit different, but really take a break from this. And just really, for me, I wanted to share my heart about, uh, you know, about these lessons from uh, you know, hiking the mountains, you know, um, and I feel like how this relates for us uh, in our relationship with God. And I realize that there are times that, you know, that we can learn a lot when we are challenged. You know, when you and I, when we are challenged, we can actually learn a lot. And also in challenging conditions, it's a great setting for us to learn, even when we don't want to learn, you know. 
So now, let me start, first of all, I want to show you the first picture, put it in there. You know, this is me, and I'm with my friend Stone, and uh, my friend Brandon is taking the picture. And, you know, look at the smile that I have in there. You know, I'm happy. We are ready to start the hike. You know, I didn't know what I was getting into it. Do you see my little belly there, like it, with my little belt strapping in there? You know, I lost all that weight in like after 30 minutes, you know, seriously. But, you know, the first thing that happened before we did the trip is that we had a conversation about what we were going to be carrying on our backpack. You know, what was actually what we're going to be doing on our backpack. So, you know, the first thing that I want us to talk about is really about the backpack. Um, you know, one of the things was that, you know, our goal for us, and we got together, was like, we needed to make sure that the backpack that we were carrying was going to be about 25 pounds or less. You know, it, that was going to be the, the first thing, you know, and this actually was not the actual backpack that I took because they said that it was too big for me to take. And I was like, I don't I'm mind, I'm a big guy, I can carry it, you know, I'm strong, you know, and all this stuff. And then um, I realized that, you know... Uh, I needed to take some stuff. So they gave me a checklist saying, like, you know, you need to take some, like, dry food. You know, you need to take, you know, some water. Make sure that you have that. If you want to take some snacks, you can take that. You know, for me, and I'm checking my checklist, and I go to Walmart, and I'm like, man, I really need to take some good snacks. So I see uh, trail mix. You know, there was, like, the family one-pound thing. I was like, I'm going to take that. So I put it in my cart, you know. Then after that, I mean, like, I mean, I really like beef jerky, you know. I'm traveling and I'm with pepper, and I was like, yeah, I'll do that. So there's a family-sized beef jerky. I put it in the cart, you know. Then I was like, you know, it would be great. I mean, dry food is great, but I mean, maybe I can just take some Campbell's, like, uh, you know, canned soup on it, you know. So I got a couple large canned soups. I was like, I'm going to take that too. And I was like, you know, being thirsty, I mean, I don't want to buy a water bottle or something. Maybe I'm just going to buy, you know, a 25-pack of bottled water, you know, of great value. I was like, I'll take that. So we are going there, and we meet at my friend's house, my friend's Brandon's house to see all the stuff we are taking and he's like uh, you're not taking that nope you're not taking that you're not taking the 25 pack bottle of water there's no way you're going to be able to carry that I was like what are you saying I'm weak what you know and then suddenly I had to just put my foot down I was like I'm taking my trail mix I mean I was like my pound I'm taking that my beef jerky are non-negotiable, you know. And then I started thinking, even though they didn't tell me this on the packing list, I was like, I also, I mean, I don't want my friends to say, Rod stinks, you know. I was like, I don't want that. So then, you know, I had my, you know, my deodorant that is about this size, you know, that says like 25% more, you know, how it says in there, you know. I was like, I'm taking that just in case, you know. I don't want my friends to think that I stink, you know. I, ex I took multiple changes of clothes, you know. So I have all this stuff in my bag that nobody knows, but it's there. And I'm telling you this, suddenly I started thinking about the stuff that I was putting in my bag and makes me think that as we go through challenges of life, what are some of the things that you and I are carrying in our bag? You know, what are some of those things that you and I are carrying in our bags? You know, look at actually what it says in Hebrews 12, verse 1. It says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. You know, it makes me think in, in our backpack, in our, in our physical backpack that we, all of you, and I know each one of us are carrying, you know, are certain things that probably you have to put in, like I had to, that they were no negotiables, like water, I had to take some basic food, you know, for me it was putting snacks, but suddenly I start realizing that there were certain things that actually, I actually did not actually need that I was taking there just because I thought that I needed, but in reality, along the way, I was like, this was not good. You know, and what I was thinking, what are some essential things in your life? Maybe it's your family, maybe it's your marriage, maybe your kids, your job, maybe it's actually being at school right now and taking classes, maybe you're, uh, you know, being in charge of the finances and beyond. You know, and I want you to think about what are some of those things that you're 
are carrying or you need to carry in your bag that are actually are essential, but also what are some of those things that are non-essential? You know, because guys, when we started, when I was smiling in that picture that you saw, guys, I was in my backpack and I was like, you know, I can do this all day long. But 30 minutes later, as we're going up the mountain, guys, I am sweating like a pig. My legs are shaking. My heart is, you know, going so fast. And my bag, honestly, it started feeling three times heavier than what actually I was feeling at first. And I started thinking, you know what? That trail mix, I should have just thrown it away. I should have just bring like a little bag. You know, I can go out, you know, I didn't need multiple things of clothes. I don't think everybody cares how I smell in the forest. Like, maybe the bears will care, but I don't, you know. And honestly, don't tell anybody, but before, our, after our second day, actually I got rid of like 80% of all the food that I had that I wasn't going to need because I even wasn't going to use it. I just got rid of it because I was like, I'm not carrying this. It's so heavy in my bag. So now, guys, what are some of those optional things that maybe in your life you are carrying right now in your backpack? What are some of those things that maybe, like me, they will make you feel comfortable at times, but you are carrying this big weight that maybe God is saying, you know, get rid of it. You don't have to be doing this. You're just doing it to yourself. Maybe something financially. Maybe it's a relationship. But, you know, you have to stop and just take a minute and say, you know, if I really want to finish this race well, I have to remove some of those things that are too heavy in my bag that you are not supposed to be carrying. So now let's read again what Hebrews says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Guys, we have to get rid of any unnecessary weight in our lives, in our physical backpacks. You know, and then, you know, after that picture that I show you, then suddenly they were ready to close the trunk of the car and they said, hey, Rod, um, I don't know if you would like to use this, but, you know, we use this uh, all the time and we brought an extra pair of this and it says some of this climbing poles, you know, and I was like, all right, you know, I look like, uh, you know, um, you know, and I was like, look at that. I look such a professional, right? That could be like with Bear grills or something. Never mind. Look at my, anyway, my, anyway. Okay, my legs need a little more sun. Uh, <clears throat> just saying. Um, but, you know, as they opened the trunk, they said, there is this pole that maybe you should consider taking with you. And I was like, really? And said, so like, yeah, they might help you. And I was like, I don't even want to say no. But then at the same time, I was like, I'm going to look goofy, you know. Like, you know, I feel like I've only seen it in the movies, you know, when they're climbing high in the mountains, you know. And, like, people get, you know, died and then they have to eat each other. And I was like, you know, I told those guys, hey, you know, if you need to eat someone, I eat me first. You know, eat Mexican food. It will fit better. You know what I mean? Um, and I, So anyway, so... So then suddenly I was like, I'll do it. And I'm telling you, after 30 minutes, I could feel how important these poles were. Because they were actually taking some of the weight from my legs. They were taking it off. And it was more in my hands as I was going there through the trail. But then the other part was, this actually also helped me to actually to stay grounded and balanced as I was going actually through the difficult parts, guys. You know, uh, there was actually a moment when I actually fell. And if it wasn't because I was, you know, with using one of the poles, I would have gone like down probably, you know, below or whatever. And so I ended up scraping my knee really bad. Not really bad, but kind of bad. And, um, and then um, at that moment, I just heard my wife's voice talking to me. Something that she told me before we left. And it wasn't, I love you, have fun. Or kind of like, I'm gonna, I know that you're going to do great. She told me, please make sure you don't come back complaining that your body hurts. All right? Because <laughs> you are doing this to yourself. So that's what I heard when I was like, well, you know? 
I knew that I wasn't going to get any sympathy from her, from my injury, you know. So now, you know, when I was going up the hill, they helped me to go up. But also when I was going down the hill, it was actually helping me also to make sure that, you know, I wouldn't fall. You know, makes me think some of you guys might be right now going up the hill, going in difficult circumstances when you're like, this is hard. Maybe for some of you, actually, you are probably going downhill and it's like, this is going down too quickly. And maybe you need some poles. So I thought that the equivalent of these two poles for me hiking the mountain was actually, one of them was the Word of God and the other one was prayer. You know, in the first one, Let's see what it says in Psalm 119. It says this, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You know, guys, one of the poles in our life is actually the word of God. You know, because, you know, when we actually mainly travel during the day, you know, before we stop for, you know, for our time just to camp and beyond, and so we really, we're not using a lamp to go through this, you know, trail. But really, the Word of God actually can keep you balanced. And especially, you know, when your own legs, when your own strength start kind of failing, the Word of God can actually keep you balanced and can remind you of the things that God has said that we need to be doing. You know, when stuff gets too heavy, you know, you can rely on the Word of God to tell you the direction that you should go. You know, guys, in these difficult times, you know, we need to be reminded what the Word of God says. It says that we need to love our neighbors. You know, are you loving your neighbors in this season? And I'm not talking of, you know, the guy, the neighbor that actually that everybody loves because they mow their lawn on time and their house looks pristine. Or maybe during Easter, they actually bring you a basket. And you're like, I really like these neighbors. They're great. But I'm talking about, are you loving the neighbors that rub you the wrong way? Are you loving those neighbors that play loud music on Saturday morning? And it's country music. Imagine that. That's just, ah, you know. You know, the, this Bible also says that we need to pray for our enemies. You know, are you praying for those that are different than you? You know, for those that maybe think that you are wrong and you think that they are wrong. Maybe for those who hurt you, are you praying for them? You know, maybe the challenge that I want to give you in this season for you to hold to the pole of the Word of God is maybe right now you have to do is you have to go online in your computer and you have to find a 30-day reading plan. Maybe for you to get going. Maybe you need to download again the uh, YouVersion Bible app that maybe you downloaded a couple years ago and maybe you're like, oh, I need to download it again and find a 30-day reading plan and start reading that. The second poll, guys, is prayer. You know, this is what it says in 1 Thessalonians 17. Pray, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Guys, I'm telling you guys, as I was climbing, after 30 minutes, my prayer life went up to, you know, the sky. I was praying, I was begging, I was saying, Lord, please help me, you know, because I was in pain, I was rebuking the devil, I was like, you caused this to me, you know, you're distracting me, I'm hurting and all this stuff, you know. And then I'm also thinking, I don't want my friends to think that I'm, you know, a flake and I'm going to give up on them. But you know what? Another thing that is going to keep us grounded is prayer. It's prayer, guys. You know, prayer is when we talk and also when we listen to God. You know, if you are not in the habit of using this Paul of prayer... This is a great opportunity for you to start, you know, set your phone, set a reminder in the morning for 10 minutes or in the evening where you're just going to be still and maybe you're going to just talk to God for like literally for five minutes and then listen for five minutes. 
you know, talking to him about how you feel, about what's going on in your life, knowing suddenly you're asking him, God, what is in your heart? And I believe that suddenly he will start showing you places that you can actually be his hands and feet. Imagine that, that suddenly you start seeing things that you haven't seen before. You know, knowing what is actually the direction of your life. Because I know, guys, I'm the first one to say, even though I'm 39 years old, there are times when I'm like, am I really going in the direction that I'm supposed to go? And there are times when God prompts my heart, says, you know what, you need to change some things. There are times when like, just keep going. But that happens when we take time to pray, to talk to God, to listen to God. You know, maybe God wants you to speak to you about the future of your family or your marriage or actually your church, this church and beyond. Make sure that you are holding to the pole of prayer. You know, and the last lesson that I learned in this trip, that it actually, it really matters who you travel with. It really matters who you travel with. You know, guys, I had two teammates, my friend Brandon and Stone. You know, one of them was experienced. He's the one who had a map. He's the one who knew what are the signs that we needed to follow. He was, was the one who was keeping us in the right direction. The second one that was younger, he also was experienced. But he brought the energy, the life. You know, I was trying to keep up with him, but there's no way that I could keep up with a 15 years old guy. You know, guys, but there was something that I caught at the very beginning of this, was that the, as the three of us, we were hiking, they said something. We need to stay on a steady pace. So I was, you know, at, at first I was in the middle, you know, I was kind of like in the Oreo cookie, you know, I was in the middle of the Oreo cookie, and like they were kind of keeping me in pace, you know, we were not going nor too fast, nor too slow, we were just coming, you know, going a little bit at a time, you know, so who are those people in your life that actually keep you on pace? Who are the people that are going to help you to walk, not too fast, not too slow, but in the right Pace. You know, guys, something also that happened is because originally I was planning to take my 25 bottles of water. You know, after a few minutes, so 30 minutes, I was actually so thirsty. I had drank all my water. And then they said, you know what? We need to find the water source. So they had a map of where they needed to find a water source. You know, and if you've been in TV, you know, when they drink dirty water and all this stuff and like they eat like, you know, like all stuff that is disgusting. I was like, I'm not drinking that water. I was like, this water looks dirty, you know. And, but I was like, I'm so thirsty. I just do it. And then suddenly my friend pulled out of his bag. He's like, no, 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 no. I have this special bag and has a filtration system. Ah, oh, I forgot about the picture. Yes. So anyway, so that picture was after we hiked for 10 miles, we camped, and we found this homemade, actually God-made bath. So we, I got in there, and then someone else got in there. I mean, and it was so cold, but it was so great. It was refreshing. Let's go again. Next slide. Next. Next slide, you know. You know, that way I was sweating. Anyway, I was smiling. It was a fake. Anyway, so... <clears throat> So as I was drinking, uh, ready to drink this dirty water, my friend pulls out this bag that had also a filter in it, and she started putting all the water that we were getting from the creek, and the water turned out to be clean. It cleaned the water. And I started thinking in our life is, do you have people that are going to give you clean water to drink, or they're going to give you dirty water to drink? And I'm talking about spiritually in your life. You know, and I realized how valuable it was to be with those guys traveling because I would have just grabbed my hands and start drinking the water there and probably 30 minutes later I would have had something else in my stomach coming out, as you probably imagine, you know. So now, who are those people that you have in your life? Are there people in your life that are challenging you, that are speaking truth, they are loving on you, they are a good ear, 
You know, not only what you want to hear, but actually they tell you what you need to hear. Those that keep you in the right pace will take you to drink pure water. Because guys, you know, being alone is tough. There's no way I would have been able to make this hike by myself. I would have actually just walked back and I was like, I am going to um, McDonald's and I'm going to get a Big Mac combo and I'm going to drink it because this is really tough. I would have gone back or I would have died in the wilderness or something like that. You probably wouldn't be here. Uh, you would have found me on the news or something like that. But it makes me think that being alone is actually tough. You know, it makes me think that Jesus, even he modeled this really well. He actually had 12 disciples. But of those 12, there were three guys that he actually, at times he brought with him to special times to say, hey, come with me. Let's do something together. And, you know, there is one time when Jesus actually, you know, calls these three guys and they get to see and experience things that the other, the rest of the guys did not. Let's read it in Matthew 17, 1 and 2. It says this. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. It wasn't as high of a mountain as the one I went, just so you know. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. So guys, even though Jesus had 12 disciples, he asked these three guys to go with him. You know, Peter, James, James and John, they saw and experienced things that other people did not. Jesus felt comfortable with them. You know, they, they were not perfect in any means. You know, if you later on read about those guys, actually when Jesus is ready to go to the cross, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he's suffering. He's saying this that is it's to come is going to be really tough. So he asked these three guys to say, come and pray with me, help me. And you know what those guys did? They fell asleep. And then Jesus wakes them up and says, hey guys, Pray with me. This is terrible. And they wake up and they fall asleep again. Imagine that how bad it was. And finally Jesus is like, whatever, you know. But who are those people in your life? People that will keep you at a healthy pace, that will challenge you in love. You know, guys, the first night when uh, I, that picture of the bath that I was taking or whatever you call and I had short son, Renee wants to say that. You know, guys, I was in a lot of pain. My legs were hurting. I, it was, I, I was like, kind of like, oh, I cannot move. There's no way I'm going to do another 10 miles the next day. I didn't tell them that, but I felt like, ah, oh, this is going to be terrible. I could see a helicopter coming and picking me up and taking me, you know. If I had a friend who had a helicopter, I probably would have called him. Um, but then suddenly my friend, he said, like, I'm going to give you some vitamin I. And I was like, wow, I never heard of vitamin I ibuprofen, all right, so he gave me some, you know, ibuprofen, I was like, keep it bringing them, you know, and, um, and I felt, you know, he said, it will help you to feel better next tomorrow, you know, and it really helped, who are those people in your life that are going to help you, that are there for you, you know, do you have anyone that you can bounce ideas, you know, about, tell him about what are you putting in your life, that are going to show you the water sources where you can drink healthy things. That they will help you to stay hydrated spiritually. You know, guys, and something happened that I thought it was really neat. That we did not plan it like this. We had a lot of fun. We laughed and we said jokes. We saw a snake that was a rattlesnake somewhere in there. We didn't step on it. It was great. But there were a, a few times when we had some really good, meaningful conversations. Suddenly, we started talking about deep stuff. Not the whole time. We had a time to laugh. And I felt like I was like, that was so good. That was so good for my soul. You know, and we actually, finally, we made it back. And I couldn't walk for a couple days after that because I was in so much pain because I was like, oh, I overdid it. But I'm so glad that I did it. I went. I, I'm sure it changed my life in many ways. 
you know, there's no way I could have done it by myself. I, that the gear that I took was actually very, very essential for me. So now, here we are this morning at the Radford Theater, or maybe watching online, And I want to ask you, what are some of the things that maybe in this season, as you are preparing for this journey, what are some of the things that maybe you are carrying in your bag, the things that you need to remove? You know, it's funny, I pulled out this backpack from my attic, and I I was like, wow, what do I have in here? And I was hoping maybe I was going to find some money or something, you know, like, I'm like, man, I probably hide some money a few years ago, and I forgot, and I found an Amazon Prime box, that was terrible, you know, and then I found bubble wrap, probably I was hiding it from my kids, because they want to always destroy the bubble wrap, you know, I found an envelope, God knows what it was in there, you know, and I had all this junk in here, that I don't know what it is, but it makes me think, that maybe in this season God wants you to see what are things that you're carrying in your bag and what are some things that are essential and what are some of the things that are not essential and you need to remove them or maybe you need to add on to them because you know what this walk that we are walking this hike that we're walking in life at times gets really tough and maybe for you right now it's really tough but actually what God is saying you know what I can I am with you and I can do it, but also you got to do your part. You know, no one is going to be putting stuff in your bag. You have to do this. Now, the other thing here is the poles that you have. Maybe you think that it's funny, they look funny, but actually they have a very specific purpose. You know, are you making sure that you are staying balanced in life? Because right now, guys, really, truth, quote, quote, is relative. You know, it doesn't matter what you think or what this person thinks. You know, everybody is believing the truth. That's not what the Bible says. It says that the ultimate truth is actually in God, in the scripture, to keep you grounded. Maybe you need to actually say, you know what? God is challenging you to say, you need to be praying for your enemies. You need to be praying for those that are in authority. You maybe need to be praying for a miracle. Guys, I was thinking uh, something that a friend of mine was sharing the other day that he said, you know what? If God answered your prayer today, listen to this. If God answered your prayer today, would it only affect you and those you love? Or would it have a major impact in your community, in your country, and in your world? Think about it. If God would answer your prayer today, would it only affect you and those that you love? Or would it have an effect or impact in your community, in your country, in your world? My prayer will be that we will be the kind of people that will say, you know what? We want actually that our prayers will impact not only us and the people that we love. Now, guys, the last one is who are you traveling with or are you traveling alone? You know, and more than I know that you probably can make a checklist of saying, well, I want the people that I travel with that they are not whiny or I don't want people to be, you know, I want people to be actually pretty fit or you can make the list of the people that you would like to travel with. But I want to ask you a different way. His, are you or could you be a good teammate? Or are you full of complaints? Or you are negative with negative attitudes? Or are you trustworthy? Do you do the stuff that you're committed to do? Do you do it in the time when you're committed to do it? Are you a good listener? Or you are always someone that, you know, always is speaking and letting other people talk? Are you open for someone else to speak the truth and love in your life? Guys, I'm praying that in this season, perhaps God wants you to say, I want you to pray that, that, you know, that you see who are those people. Maybe God already has given them to you. Maybe you have neglected those relationships. Are we the type of people that others will enjoy or want to travel with? You know, guys, in this season, because of 
the pandemic and all this stuff, it is so easy. It has been so easy, and I'm including myself in there, for us to step out of being in community. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is so easy for us to do that. But I believe that that's not the way that God intended it to be. For us, we need to be in community. We need to be with other people that are going to remind us, that are going to love on us, that are going to encourage us, challenge us. You know, not long ago, I was talking to a good friend and he was telling me about some difficult things that he was going through. And as he was talking, then suddenly he started realizing that a lot of the things that was happening to him was because he was alone, because he had actually neglected some of his relationships, you know, for good reasons. But he had just suddenly realized that he had, you know, closed that community that he had. So now this is what I would like to do. So I would like for us to stand up. We're going to be closing with a, a song in just a minute. But what I would like to do is this. Is I would like to challenge you about this. You know that maybe for you, you actually, this journey, you know, I knew where we were going and we were going to go. But I believe also that, you know, right now, maybe for you, you have to find where are you going. I know, you know, I believe what Jesus said that, you know, for those, you know, that... <laughs> Believe in Him, believe in Jesus, will not perish, but have an eternal life. Maybe you know that destination. But maybe for you, actually, you are not there yet. And maybe God wants to challenge you this morning to say, you know what? I really need to define the destination that I'm going. And maybe for you is to say, I want to start this relationship with Jesus. And if that's you, I want to pray for you. I want to take a moment and pray for you. You know, maybe for you, might be at something different. It might be for you to take the next step. Might be for you to say, I am going to get baptized in this coming time that we're going to have baptism and say, I want people to know that I'm a follower of Christ, that I'm decided that I'm going to follow him. You know, maybe for you is to say, God, show me what are the things that I need to take off or I need to put in my bag that I'm carrying. Maybe to say, I need to take the challenge that I'm going to pray, that I need to, you know, sustain myself with the word of God so I want to take a moment to pray and I want to ask the worship team to come up and Father I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here Lord Jesus I want to pray specifically for my friends that in this season Lord that they need they need to start a relationship with you that maybe right now they have been hesitating that they said this is looks scary I just pray right now that they will take the first step and I know that you will take the next steps also Lord so I just want to pray for those that right now they need to pray this prayer and say father I want to start this relationship this journey with you show me how to do this show me how to go next in this and I want to also pray right now for those right now that they need to take this challenge of getting baptized. I pray that right now you will solidify that in their hearts and their mind that they will say, this is what I need to do. But Lord, I want to also just pray for all of us that are here that, you know, that Lord, help us to know what we need to do in this journey, Lord. Whether it's changing things in our, in things that we are carrying, whether it's for us, realizing of the importance of prayer and scripture or whether it's for us to see who is the people that is traveling with us that we need to have around us lord in order for us to to be in a good place lord so i just pray for this lord jesus in your name we pray amen